Technically Speaking. This is a podcast of all things happening at Capital Area Technical Center here in Augusta, Maine. And today I'm joined by a December Professional of the Month. This is Reagan Bichard. Welcome. Thanks for coming on. Um, so if you could tell us um, what grade you're in, what school you go to, program here at CATC. Yeah, so I'm a senior at Coney High School and I'm in the Certified Nursing Assistant Program at CATC and I love it. Oh, good. Just yeah. tell us what you like about it, okay. being in the program. Um, I really like how hands-on it is, and we just do a lot of cool stuff. We deal with um, a lot of bedside help with residents at nurses' homes and such, and we get that hands-on experience with clinical hours. Um, I really love my teacher, Miss B. She makes it so much more fun and such a good learning environment. Um, and yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. So having Mrs. B, like you say, it's great that our instructors here, they've actually worked in the field. Oh, yeah. So, and she has a lot of nursing experience. She does. She just, she gives us little tips and tricks and what would make it easier to do, little things that just help. And from her experience, we obviously take it. And, nice. Yeah. Nice. So you mentioned you do a lot of lab work. Yeah. And then you go out to um, nursing homes. Yeah. So is that what a typical week is like in there? Yeah, so a typical week, we start the week with lecture in the classroom. So we're learning about anatomy or just different skills. This week we're doing finger sticks, so learning how to take blood glucose levels. Um, but, yeah, so we start off with that stuff and we learn all week. And then we head down to the lab on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And we get that hands-on activity to reinforce what we learned that week. And that must really help when you go out then to work with actual patients right. that you've had some yeah, practice. We, we're really lucky here. We have a lot of um, beds and dummies and everything that you would need to do, all the tools. So oh, that's it's really nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. What do you think your greatest accomplishment has been so far this year in that program? Um, so before COVID sparked up again this month, we were going to clinicals which just ended just to keep the residents safe, just for now. But before, just seeing them smile and making them laugh and having a conversation with them just makes their day. Even if a lot of the residents we work with have dementia, so even if they can't remember your name the next day, you still know that you made their day the day before. So oh, that's, that's been my favorite part. That's very cool. I think it is just incredible that you guys are actually out working with real patients. It's awesome. Yeah, it's something unlike no other. It's a great experience. Yeah. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. Um. So, what do you do when you're not here in school? Well, I keep it keep myself busy. So, I am captain of the varsity basketball team, and I also play varsity lacrosse. So, I do that the second half of the year, but. Um, other than that, I spend a lot of time with my family and my friends, homework, of course, <laughs> lots of studying, but it all pays off. So. Yeah. And how does it pay off? What are your plans that you graduate this year? Yeah. So what so are your plans? I'm planning on attending the University of New Hampshire to study health sciences because I want to be a physician's assistant. So that's a, a six-year program. So I'll study health sciences for four years, and then I'll apply to PA school for two, and with the CATC experience, I need 2,000 hours of hands-on care before I can apply to PA school. So getting my certification through high school lets me get those hours in through college before I apply to that PA school. Oh, I didn't realize yeah. that. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Yeah, so it's that, really helpful. That is awesome. I think like sometimes people think like if you're going to college, you probably shouldn't come over here to the tech center, but yeah. that couldn't be further from the truth. Right. Yeah. Like uh, I joined the program actually like three weeks late. So I didn't know that I wanted to take this class and I was, I was like, well, I probably won't need it. But I toured Husson and a couple other schools and they really highly encouraged I take this program. Through my high school, not only do you save money, but you get it done while you're in high school. So then once you go out to college, you already have that, and you don't have to take night classes during college to be able to get something like this. Oh, how awesome. Yeah. I think another thing too, like now that you've worked in the medical field yeah. yourself, you can see if you even like it. Right, yeah, I know. Some people just, it's not for them, and it's good that you can find out before you dedicate your college experience to that one thing. It's great that you can know. 
I or, agree with you for sure because you would spend a lot of time and money. We've had students that go into the nursing program and then they, you know, faint if they see yeah. blood or they don't like the smells. They don't realize they have to actually touch people. Yeah, and, yeah. and there's more to it than you would think. So. Uh, oh, for sure. Yeah. It takes a very special person. It does, yeah. You have to have a really caring personality. And I think a lot of it comes just from empathy. Like, just envisioning, like, if that was your grandmother, how would you want her to be treated? So, that's what I always think about before I have these clinical issues. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I want you to hear what um, Mrs. B had to say about okay, you. Yeah. <laughs> she said, as a teacher, I'm very proud to recommend Reagan Bichard for CATC Student of the Month in December 2021 for her outstanding academic achievements and quality work in the Nursing Assistant Corps. Reagan, a senior at Coney High School, has established herself as a high achiever in academics, a key contributor to her graduating class and Coney sports. At CATC, Reagan focuses on the important work that a nursing assistant performs at the bedside each and every day. Her eagerness to learn, class time contribution, caring gestures, and display of quality clinical skills are just a few of her attributes that deserve this recognition. Reagan's perpetual optimism and kind spirit are present daily in the classroom and clinical environment. Moving on to college, I have no doubt Reagan will excel in the medical field. She currently plans to enroll into the University of New Hampshire's Physician Assistant Program. This high-paced and demanding curriculum will present Reagan with a challenge she is well prepared to excel at. I have no doubt she will bring her A-game which for Reagan means dedication, authenticity, and a caring demeanor. Good luck, Reagan. Job well done, she said. Oh, so Miss B. <laughs> I know. She's the best. Very nice words coming from her. Coming from her, it means a lot, yeah. For sure. And, uh, you know, I I remember you when you played softball with my daughter, yes. you know, and it's oh, been yeah. fun watching you grow up, and I'm so excited about what you're doing in the future. And I Thank think you so much. You'll do very well. It's been fun to watch you kind of grow up. I've definitely grown up, yeah. <laughs> it went by fast. So congratulations, and thanks so much for being a guest yeah. today and telling everybody about the a little about yourself and the program here at Capital Area Technical Center and the CNA program. And I hope um, you stay tuned and meet our second professional of the month. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the second half of Technically Speaking, All Things Happening at Capital Area Technical Center. I'm joined by our second professional of the month. Um, welcome, and I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Tell us what school you're from and program you're in. I'm Zachary Fuso. I'm from Gardner Area High School, and I'm part of the CATC program with Chef Heidi, and I'm a second year. Excellent, excellent. So, um, in the Culinary Arts program, what are, what's a typical day like in there? Well, typically, we show up, chef explains us the day and how we're going to go and what we're going to do, and then she sends us to get changed. We go get changed into our uniforms, and then we wash our hands, wash our tables, and then we meet chef in kitchen two to do a demo for whatever it is we're going to be doing for the day. And then after that, we go do it. Oh, excellent. It's always something different every day that you guys are doing in there. Yeah, besides when it gets to like cake decorating or like do where we do cupcakes, like we'll make off the cupcakes and we'll learn how to do just the decorating on them. Like we'll decorate a cupcake, wipe it off, and then rebake it until we get it perfect. <laughs> oh, wow. And well, I, I just know you're always doing stuff different in there because it smells mm -hmm. different every day. Yeah. I mean, there's stuff that I did the first year that I didn't, we didn't do this year. And so I'm still learning new stuff, even though I've already done it once or twice. And she just changes it up all the time, which is really cool. Oh, for sure. Um, what do you think has been your greatest accomplishment? And especially you've been in there for, you know, this is your second year. My greatest accomplishment would be getting ServeSafe certified in my 10-hour OSHA certification class, which gave me access to get a job really, really easy. I walked in, I told them I was Safe Surf certified and OSHA certified, and I was hired that day and started the next day. So, serve safe being a sanitation course that you food food handling, sanitation, personal hygiene, all of that. That just proves that you know what it is, you know how to control it, handle it, and if it, and then the OSHA thing is like how to handle people if somebody's being rude or like if somebody has, is having an allergic reaction. Like you know how to handle all of these things. It just gets you ready for the real world of a kitchen and not having somebody constantly looking over you, making sure you're doing okay. Well, yeah, I would think that would be very important. Like, when I go out to eat, I want to eat in a safe mm -hmm. place, people that know how to handle food properly. And It's scary to 
a lot of restaurants, you don't even need to be served safe. You can just go work, not even know how to handle food, and they'll just be like, yep, here you go. You can go work in the kitchen. Yeah, that is scary. It is. For sure. Um, so what do you do when you're not here at school? I watch a lot of cooking videos. Um, all of my social media is just filled with food. Like If I just open up Instagram right now and start scrolling, it's just food. I like to look through it, look at plating, ideas, things that I've never tried. And then when I get bored of that, I just play video games and talk to my friends. I love it because I, I remember when you first came up to the school as a sophomore, we did a, uh, like a program during, I want to say it was April break or February break. I think I know what you're talking about. And you, all, you had passion for cooking then, mm -hmm. you know, and you've just developed it. I remember watching you last um, spring at the food truck. I mean, that was kind of your baby. You were the leader in that in that and um now you're just even more blossoming i mean you're professional of the month out of all the you know the 30 students in the class that you just have kind of risen to the top with your um passion for the food industry mm -hmm. it's been we don't have a lot of students for the three years so it's been really great to watch you kind of flourish and, and grow and just continue that passion yeah, and cooking's always been my thing. Ever since I could reach the stove top, or even if I couldn't, I'd have a stool. Whenever my mom would be cooking, I'd ask to help. Even if it was something I didn't know what to do, I just, I wanted to help. I always wanted to make myself useful and not just stand around. Because I hate to see people break their backs just to feed me, like, when I could do the same. <laughs> and it sounds like, but you want to feed other people, too, yeah. it sounds like. Well, especially the people that can't cook for themselves or have a disability or just can't do it. Like they can't make what they want to make. That's what I, that's what I really like to do. Is feed those type of people. Or people like me that just don't have a clue when it comes to cooking. Yeah, that type of stuff too, yeah. <laughs> I can still enjoy someone else's. Um, what are your plans after graduation? I don't, I don't have any like educational plans, like go to college, any of that, because when it comes to curriculum, I'm not very good with it. But I would love to find a mentor to teach me everything I would need to know that would do it the way I wanted to do it, kind of, if that makes sense. So it's not like, oh, you need to do a 20-page packet on all of this stuff. Like, I would much rather slowly learn that stuff through, like, absorbing. Like, you show me it, I would understand it, and then I can try and do it. Instead of it being like, well, you just need to do it. Here's the papers to do it. You can just do it. It's kind of like the model that you're, Chef you're, has. you're doing here. Yeah, mm -hmm. just continue on that. Yeah. And do you have like an ultimate goal of where you want to go in the in the culinary arts? I would love to have my own pub. That would be hands down big goal right there, just to have a pub. That would that'd be it. Oh, that's awesome! I think that um, I know, like my husband. That's where he when we go out to eat, he always wants to go to a good pub. I think they're always so nice, especially the smaller ones. Just the atmosphere is so much better. It kind of feels like at home. You're not in like this really big open. There's hundreds of people there's only like 20 people in there you end up getting to know the waitresses the servers the cooks because they've worked there their whole lives if not 20 years like if more uh, awesome awesome and the food's always good always <laughs> it good. seems like it, yeah. every pub's food is always good <laughs> for sure or they don't last long i guess probably yeah all right well i want to let you know what um chef had to say about you and you being selected for our professional of the month uh, Zachary has impressed me by the way he absorbs information so quickly, which is vital for any young chef to survive in this demanding industry. Zachary demonstrates skills that shows he is always thinking about plate presentation and flavor profiles while executing great time management skills and excellent workplace sanitation. It has been nice to have a student like Zachary in the program and can't wait to see what he does in his food service career. So, great words coming from Chef. Um, congratulations and thank you for taking a few minutes to talk to me about your experiences in that program. Hopefully someone's watching and it'll get them excited also to um, have the experience in that culinary arts program. And congratulations for thank being you. selected our professional of the month and thank you for watching another episode of Technically Speaking, all things happening at Capital Area Technical Center here in Augusta, Maine. And I, if you like this episode, I hope you'll subscribe to our channel so you'll never miss anything.